Max McKenna with the song True North. Welcome back. You're listening to The Country Viewpoint here on your colour of a country life, Flow FM. Well, we are spending the majority of the day covering this renewables rally in Canberra. And joining me on the line now to offer a different perspective is Troy Radford. He's the president of the Newcastle Port Stevens Game Fish Club and he's fighting for the Hunter Shore wind zone uh, and the possible ramifications which will come about as a result of this direction being persevered with. It's great to be with you. How are you, Troy? Not too bad. Thanks for having us. Well, there's plenty to get through. Firstly, why don't you just tell us about uh, your presidency there of the Newcastle Port Stevens Game Fish Club? Yes, yeah, so I'm the president of Newcastle Port Stevens Game Fish Club, the biggest game fishing club in Australia, and we host um, the biggest game fishing tournament in the Southern Hemisphere out of Port Stevens which is about to be um, decimated by Mr. Bowen's crazy renewable offshore wind farm. Okay, well, you're not just uh, reading this off scripts like many politicians do. You've actually taken the time out to uh, probe Chris Bowen yourself. So uh, just tell us about what happened on that occasion. Yeah, so I've met with Chris a couple of times and the guys, and um, we, we spoke to him about our issues and the problems that we can see that will arise and the imp- negative impact that it's going to have to our area. Area, and the arrogance of the man is incredible. He's um, one of the most arrogant men I've ever met. He does not listen and he does not care. As simple as that. Well, uh, let's try and sort of... Um understand exactly how this is going to hurt the Hunter Valley and the people of the Hunter uh, in various different ways. Firstly, just going off um, economic interests um, by really persevering this uh, renewables uh, target and this direction to uh, effectively entirely phase out fossil fuel plants out of Australia. I mean, what is this going to do economically to the city, which is already sort of... uh, been declining slightly in an, in an economic sense over the last decade. You'd know more about that, Troy. But uh, just as as far as this uh, obsession with renewables goes, what's that going to mean economically for the people of the Hunter? Yeah, well, the, the economics here in Port Stevens and the Mile Coast is based on tourism and the fishing industry. If if this offshore wind farm proposal goes ahead, it will decimate the fishing industry. Um, professional fishermen fish this area. They no longer be allowed in there. The game fishing, we have people come from all over the world to fish the area. Um, you're no longer going to have that. We also have a massive whale watching industry um, in the winter months, which has diversified over the years. Um, it is huge. There's 80,000 whales that travel through this area every season. We have a, one of the biggest fleets on the east coast of Australia that travel out to view the whales, dolphins and all the marine life. If this goes ahead, it will affect all of this and the economy will go downhill. Bowen talked about that it's going to create jobs for the hunter. The jobs that are going to create are for overseas, highly skilled labour that we don't have. The people here in Port Stephens are mainly tourism and hospitality. Um, so they're going to be without a job. They're not trained to work on these towers. And at the end of the day, it will decimate the Port Stephens and the Mile Coast economy. And just going off the wildlife perspective too, you've done a deep dive, pun intended, uh, with regards to just how dangerous the lives of some of these whales that pass through may now become as a result of the uh, excess amount of wind farms that we may see there on the coast. Uh, Can you elaborate on that for us? Yeah, so we've got all these wind farms, 1,800 square kilometres. That zone, no shipping traffic, no boating traffic's allowed in there. We've got the port of Newcastle to the south of us. Now, there's nearly 8,000 shipping movements a year that come out of the port of Newcastle. So what's going to happen is all the ships are going to be condensed into a smaller area of a, of a strip of about 15 kilometres wide where it travels up the coast. Now, 80,000 humpback whales travelling migrating up and down the coast, 8,000 ship shipping movements through that area during the year, solves disaster. Um, <clears throat> the, the pro-lobbyists for the wind farms admit that ship strikes are for more deaths of whales than anything in the world at the moment. So there we have it, 8,000 ship bumping into potentially 80,000 whales. It's just not smart. Troy Radford giving up a lot to be in Canberra today to fight for what he believes is a cause that unites many people. We'll speak to him about a few other issues in a few short moments' time, but up next, we'll take a brief look at the weather across our Flow FM network. Stay tuned. It's a country viewpoint here on Flow.
Post Malone with Overdrive and welcome back. It's the Country Viewpoint here on Flow FM. Well, I'm speaking with Troy Radford. He's attending the Renewables Rally in Canberra today and he's giving up a lot to be there. He is a protester and we've got plenty more to discuss, including the topic of the local bird population in your area there, Troy, which is also under threat as a result of potential wind farms that are going to be popping up in their numbers over the next few months and years? Yeah, well, that's correct. Um, we have a bird here called the Gould Peckerel. There's only 2,000 nesting pairs of these in the world. And we have an island here off Port Stevens called Cabbage Tree Island. That's the only place at present that these birds um, breed. Now, these birds travel out to sea overnight to feed and they travel backwards and forwards. These turbines are out there. From the, own, from the proponent's own report, they state, that these, these turbines will have a devastating effect to bird life. So over 300 turbines, 360 metres high, um, we're going to have all the birds flying through and we're going to have mass carnage of an endangered species, which for energy that was supposed to be clean and green, it's not real clean and it's not real green if you're going to kill all your wildlife off. All right, Troy, to the matter of Canberra, uh, this rally, tell us what it means to you. Is this the biggest movement you've seen with regards to the commonly held interests of, uh, you know, keeping these wind farms out of regional and rural Australia? And uh, tell us more about uh, your sort of uh, movements as well. What what are you going to be getting up to throughout the day? Yep, so this is a huge, um, huge step forward. There's over 120 communities from all over Australia that are going to be there. There's communities there being affected um, by solar, by wind. Farmers that are having their land taken off them to run high-voltage power cables through to connect these renewable energy um, <clears throat> grids up. So it, it, it's crazy. So it will be massive. A lot of people, for myself, I'll be down there um, waving the flag, the banner, talking to as many people as I can. I've actually got a couple of meetings in Parliament with a few, um, few of the politicians. So we'll be, we'll be grabbing them, talking to them, trying to reason with them and show them a bit of... Um, trying to show them a bit of sense to say, guys, we need to stop. We need to reassess what we're doing. We're not against renewables, but we are against destroying another ecosystem to to do this and that's what's going to happen so we we need to um <clears throat> have a senate inquiry and and get this get some sharp minds together and reassess before we go any further because we get one bite at this if we wreck the ocean and that ecosystem there's no coming back and like you touched on it you know, it's all about the collective movement here, but uh, from a personal standpoint, you're obviously sacrificing a fair bit of sleep and I assume at least a couple of days' work here as well, Troy. Well, that's right. I, I've spent a lot of time on this, a lot of research, lobbying a lot of people, um, speaking to politicians. I would average three or four hours a day at the moment on this. I do run my own business as a plumber and I've got to take time off work. I'll be leaving at three o'clock in the morning to drive down to this and then tomorrow night turning and burning and driving back home. Um, and then off to work, then on Wednesday. So it's a sacrifice that I believe needs to be made um, in the best interest of Port Stephens and the Mile Coast. Well, Troy, it's been great getting to get some insights out of you on this, and uh, we really do appreciate your time. That is Troy Radford. He's the president of the Newcastle Port Stephens Game Fish Club. All the best with everything throughout the week there, Troy, and thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Troy Radford from the Hunter region in New South Wales, rounding out the country viewpoint for today in what has been an important edition of the program. We'll wrap it all up on the other side of these messages. Stay tuned.